one of the most important lessons that you and I have to learn is how to deal with our emotions and how to deal with our thoughts. And I want, I want to talk about that on the basis of this very important word known as offense. Offense. And when you're offended, it means that uh, there's something that has breached your barrier of, of protection, uh, your barrier of comfort. It, it, it basically describes someone who is out of their comfort zone and uh, to the degree that it bruises them psychologically, it bruises them mentally, it bruises them emotionally. Now, it's one thing to, to, to get cut on your arm. It's another thing to get cut in your heart, to get cut in your mind. It's another thing. And, and it's something else when infection sets in, uh, when infection sets in. Now, there are people that are dealing with anxiety. There are people that are dealing with various types of emotional ailments, uh, mental ailments, whether that be the bipolar disorder, whether it be bitterness, whether it be uh, bouts of depression, be it postpartum depression, be it uh, other, other forms of depression, be it suicidal thoughts, or, or just there's just so many things that we are increasingly dealing with as a social culture, as a society. And I, I'd like to submit to you that one of the major reasons why you, you see these things happening on a more frequent basis is because people are losing, at least, I don't, I don't know where you might be watching this video, but at least in America, at least here, and, and maybe, uh, and you can relate to this wherever you are as you're watching this, but people, many, many people are losing their ability to cope with offense, uh, with offense, with, with, with something that hurts their feelings something that breaks their heart. Now, offense can come from an individual, meaning someone offended you with something they said or did or didn't do or, or, or should have done. Uh, or offense can come from a circumstance, like a trauma, traumatic circumstance. So offense can come from a person or it can come from an event. At least it can, it can at least come from those sources it can it can at least come from those sources but uh, however it comes it has to be dealt with it has to be dealt with however offense comes it has to be dealt with and as a person who wants to succeed in life and and, and what is life successfully what is it to live life successfully living life living life successfully is living a life that is a fulfillment of everything that the God of creation designed you to do. Everything that the God of creation built you for. First, to connect and to be friends and to have a, an absolute perfect unity with him and then to have unity among your, ourselves as people, unity amongst your peers. Uh, there's a, a verse in the Bible that says, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Uh, there's a scripture, another scripture that says, follow peace with all men and holiness. So peace with men and holiness before God. Uh, and, and the outworkings of that, the outflow of that, that is a successful life. A prosperous life is fulfilling the will of God for your life, loving God and loving men. But offenses prevent us from doing that because they act as thorns, they act as weeds, they act as inner obstacles to the fulfillment of the goals that God has for us on a daily basis and over the course of our lives. And so what God absolutely wants you and I to learn to do is to get rid of offenses and to deal with traumatic situations as we face them, as they come, rather than allowing them to... To, 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 to resonate with us, uh, that's not necessarily the best word there, rather than allowing them to affect you uh, over a long term, uh, whether that be uh, for whatever reason. I used the term infection earlier. This 
this this lesson I'd like to, 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 to teach or this message I'd like to share is essentially about dealing with offenses and the demon spirit that may that may be hiding in your soul because of that offense. See the thing about offense is if something or someone offends me and I don't deal with it properly, then a demon spirit of that offense, whether it be a spirit of anger, or there be a spirit of anxiety, or a spirit of depression, a spirit of suicide, a spirit of murder, a spirit of rebellion, or hatred, or bitterness. There are various demons that are looking for people to inhabit. They are looking for people to fill because they don't want to be where God sent them when he cast them out of his presence uh, eons ago. When God cast demons down from heaven, they weren't allowed to just inhabit the surface of the earth. They had to go down to a place of imprisonment. But they occasionally are allowed to come out, tempt man, if man falls into, uh, if he falls into that temptation, then that demon can possess him. That's why Jesus said, he that commits sin is the slave of sin. That's the same talk in John 8 that he tells them that they are of their father the devil because they do what the devil uh, wants them to do. And, and there are other scriptures in the Bible that reveal that demons come from underneath the earth's surface and inhabit the top of the surface. But they have to do that by you and I allowing them to, by serving them. So let's say I serve the, the sin of of, 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 of cursing when I'm angry, when I'm offended. Let's say I serve the sin of unforgiveness. Then the demon spirit that will be identified with that sin which is, and it is a sin not to handle offense as well. When someone offends you, it's a sin not to do what Jesus commanded us to do. And what did he command us to do? He commanded us to forgive people and to forgive circumstances and even to forgive ourselves in a sense. Not because you are God, but because you can't harbor condemnation. You can't harbor depression because you've failed yourself, you didn't accomplish a goal that God wanted you to accomplish or that you wanted to accomplish or something that you set for yourself. If the Lord is going to expunge your record, if he's going to forgive you, if he's going to, if he's not condemning your heart, you can't condemn your heart. And so condemning your heart, harboring feelings of offense toward a person or because of a traumatic situation will open you up to a demon spirit that will prevent you from fulfilling the wants and the desires that God has for you. And those demons can do many, many things. Yes, they can cause asthma attacks. They can cause heart attacks. They can cause various ailments. They can cause various things that cause you to breach relationships because these feelings that you have really take control of you. And if we can't control our feelings, it's obvious that we are slaves to something, at least to our feelings. Look at a powerful verse of scripture in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 and 27. Ephesians 4 verse 26 and 27 says, Be you angry and don't sin. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Very next verse says, Neither give place to the devil. Let me read that again. Be you angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. What is that describing here? He's letting us know that it is possible for the emotion of anger to rise up and for you not to sin as a result of that emotion, that gripping feeling of anger or fear or frustration or discouragement. All of these things, anger, fear, frustration, uh, these things are, are the evidence of offense. When I'm angry, it's evident that something offended me. When I'm afraid, it's evident that something offended or is offending me. Something is bruising my mind. Something is bruising my heart. And God is saying that these emotions may rise up. You don't have to sin because these emotions have flooded your heart or your mind. And he's saying that you shouldn't allow the day to expire without you dealing with that feeling. Because if you do, then it will create an, a, a place for the devil. The devil will assume the position of that. Because it is a sin 
to harbor these feelings because the joy of the Lord is your strength, as it says in Nehemiah chapter 8. Because the love of God constrains you and compels you to walk with God and to love people. And so, yes, people are going to come at you the wrong way, and those who are doing so are going to reap the consequences of doing that. But you and I can't allow the devil access to our hearts or our minds through harboring anger, harboring fear, harboring bitterness, harboring offense, harboring any of the things that God wants us to lay down and wants us to give up. So I basically just wanted to express the importance of dealing with things and not letting them linger because they do act as a root of bitterness that will spring up and prevent you from faithfully following Jesus Christ and being free from the bondage of emotional uh, control and psychological control. God doesn't want us controlled by our thoughts. God doesn't want us controlled by our, our feelings. God wants us controlled by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost should control us. So when the Bible compels us to be sober, it also means don't be drunk with alcohol and emotion or floods of thoughts. And so God wants to deal with things as they come. That's why he says in his word that we should cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. Be angry, don't sin, don't let the day pass with those ungodly or those offensive feelings. Don't neither give place to the devil, neither give place to the devil, not in your heart, not in your soul, not in your household. I want to pray for you before we go. Holy Father, I give you thanks and praise for everybody that's watching this. And that's hearing this message. I believe that this message is from you, God. I, I pray right now that you open every person's heart who's hearing this message to total freedom. Freedom from depression. Freedom from anxiety. Depression and anxiety. I rebuke you off of the souls of every person watching this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you depression. I command you anxiety. I command you fear. To be broken now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of fear. God has not given you to us. He's given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, according to 2 Timothy chapter 1. I renounce you. We renounce you. Fear. Fear. We renounce you. Depression. We renounce you. Offense. We let you go in the name of Jesus Christ. And every demon that entered as a result of these emotional conditions. We command you to go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, right now I pray that you would loose the power on every person's heart to forgive the people that have offended them and to forgive the situations that have offended them and to embrace the love of God. Father, let the love of God enter. You said there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Lord, perfect us in your love right now. Father, everybody watching this, I impart the grace of the perfection of the love of God. Lord, I release it by your spirit. I send it right through this, 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 this technological meeting. I send it to every heart now in the name of Jesus. So we bind the spirits of fear, doubt, and unbelief, and we receive the spirit of power, love, and soundness of mine right from the Holy Ghost for the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty we receive now the liberty that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ his finished work at the cross in Jesus name amen